Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Whenever a ship or plane is lost at sea, it eventually makes its way to the bottom of the ocean. However, many of these boats and aircraft have millions of dollars in equipment on board. Others have potentially dangerous or toxic cargo on board that must be recovered before it can damage other ships or the environment. Whatever the case, the Navy relies on its diving and salvage teams. The history of these groups dates back to the early 19th century when the U.S. military first began employing divers to repair ships and retrieve lost or sunken equipment. However, it was not until the early 20th century that the Navy formally organized its diving and salvage capabilities into specialized teams. After Pearl Harbor, which saw 19 ships sunk or damaged, divers participated in one of the most extensive salvage operations ever conducted. Throughout 1942 and part of 1943, Navy divers worked on salvaging whatever they could from the vessels, all while facing poisonous gas, unexploded ordnance, and the bodies of their fallen comrades. Ever since then, the dive and salvage teams in the U.S. have maintained a reputation for being among the best in the world. One of the most recent Navy salvage operations took place in 2015. An F-A-18 Super Hornet had suffered engine problems and ended up crashing into the ocean. Unfortunately, it wasn't long before the $70 million plane was sitting 189 feet below the surface of the water. The operation to recover the aircraft took months to plan and required the participation of several hundred to accomplish. The F-A-18 had broken into several pieces after the crash, making retrieving it even more difficult. The mobile diving salvage unit even needed special permission to go below its maximum depth. This allowed them to attach hoists to the sunken aircraft, which could then be pulled back on board. From here, all toxic elements could be properly disposed of, while any valuable information or parts could be reclaimed. Despite supporting dozens of takeoffs and landings a day, accidents aboard aircraft carrier flight decks are pretty rare. This is in stark contrast to the World War II days when the technology to take off and land safely had not yet been invented. During the Doolittle raid on Tokyo, modified bombers and fighter aircraft took off from the USS Hornet. Unfortunately, Nearly all of the aircraft were ditched in the ocean or crash-landed, though most pilots survived. Even long after the war, many of these aircraft remain unsalvageable. Aircraft carriers and other vessels with flight decks take great care to prevent aircraft from becoming salvage operations in the first place.
The most critical factor in all of this is flight deck crash response. Indeed, a flight deck crash is a serious incident that requires an immediate and coordinated response. This begins with the flight deck crew sounding the alarm and alerting the crash and salvage team. Simultaneously, they will clear the deck of personnel and initiate any medical assistance to injured parties. Even if the plane is not on fire, crash crews typically come in with hoses and oxygen deprivation foam to keep the aircraft from igniting. Once everything is deemed safe, the team can begin evaluating the damage to determine if the damaged craft can be repaired. Technology has made underwater salvage operations much easier over the past few decades. One of the most significant contributors to this has been the invention of the ROV. ROV stands for a remotely operated vehicle, which is an underwater robot that can be operated by a human operator from a control room on board a surface vessel or submarine. These ROVs are typically equipped with various sensors, cameras, and manipulator arms, allowing them to perform all manner of tasks without putting human lives at risk. For example, they can inspect a crash site or damaged underwater infrastructure, survey the ocean floor, and collect scientific data that might be helpful during the upcoming salvage operation. Since they aren't limited by how much time they can spend underwater, ROVs can be invaluable tools for locating and recovering sunken vessels and cargo. Because they can operate at great depths and in hazardous conditions, ROVs can access areas that would be difficult or impossible for human divers to reach. Once in place, they can provide real-time video and sensor data to salvage crews, making the entire process safer and more efficient. These are specialized pieces of equipment used to remove damaged or disabled aircraft from the flight deck. In the event of an incident, the mobile crane can be called in to lift the damaged plane or helicopter out of the way and move it to a safer location on the carrier deck or in the hangar bay. Most of these cranes are large and feature a telescoping boom extending out over the flight deck. To do their jobs properly, the cranes are generally capable of lifting and moving aircraft weighing up to several tons and can operate in various weather conditions. Another resource most carrier-based salvage operations have at their disposal is helicopters. Unlike planes, these aircraft can hover and move vertically, which means they can rescue sailors and equipment lost at sea. When the F-A-18 crash first took place, the pilot was not far from the ship. However, crashes and ejections can happen anywhere. 
Helicopters can be deployed to help locate missing pilots and crew members as quickly as possible. They can employ a variety of tools and medical devices to rescue them from the open sea. Such rescue and recovery operations are not limited to military assets and personnel. The Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard regularly participate in civilian matters. Such as the early 2000s Minneapolis Bridge Collapse. The event involved a section of Interstate I-35W collapsing during rush hour, sending dozens of cars and trucks plummeting into the river below. More than a dozen people lost their lives, and it took weeks for all of the debris to be recovered. Fortunately, Navy divers were able to come in and help salvage as much as possible. These men and women have the experience to quickly locate and identify salvageable materials while removing trapped cars, debris, and other materials from the environment. Despite lacking the danger of military action, domestic salvage operations like these are still extremely important. U.S. Navy divers and salvage teams frequently perform drills and test operations with divers from other countries. A great example of this is Exercise Seabreeze, a multinational maritime exercise that takes place annually in the Black Sea region. Sponsored by the United States and Ukraine, the operation aims to enhance interoperability and capabilities among participating nations. The first exercise, Seabreeze, was held in 1997 and has since grown to become one of the largest military exercises in the region. It typically involves participation from a number of NATO and non-NATO nations who work together on search and rescue operations anti-piracy operations and ship handling drills. In 2021, U.S. and Ukrainian divers conducted a salvage operation to clear a sunken vessel that had blocked the port of Odessa for years. The ship had long since broken into multiple pieces and divers needed to affix lifting straps to each section so that they could be hauled out of the water by waiting cranes and placed ashore. Such operations take a lot of cooperation between teams on the land and under the water. The divers had to guide the crane and cut the sunken yacht superstructure so that the crane could lift each part safely. rigged and we cut the superstructure of the yacht and utilizing a 100-ton crane lifted an 8-ton project out of the water so that we can dispose of it properly utilizing the Ukrainian Navy and the significance of that is to go forward and plan and rig and prep for the ultimate lift of boiling the whole yacht off of the ocean bottom. The United States diving and salvage team is widely recognized as one of the best in the world. Without their unique capabilities, ships, aircraft, and equipment lost at sea could end up doing immeasurable harm to the environment, or worse, falling into enemy hands. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.